Hello and welcome to Power Platform Principles. My name is Daniel Halls. I am the Power Platform Consulting Lead at FSP. Um, we've got a video today to talk to you about the overview of Microsoft Power Platform, what it is, what it can do, and how you can use it in your organization. Before we get into that, I just want to say, um, please welcome along to the cha channel. If you have any questions about Power Platform, please pop them in the comments below. I will always do my best to answer those for you. And some of the questions that I've had in the past have actually become other videos. If you like the content, make sure you head over to the channel and subscribe. We would love to have you as subscribers to the channel. Lots of more content is coming on soon, um, so look out for that. Um, but for now, let's get started with our video on the overview of Power Platform. Today I want to talk to you about the Microsoft Power Platform as a whole and give you a bit of an overview of what it can do and how you can use it in your organizations. It's a really great tool for um, developing low-code, uh, enterprise-grade solutions within the business without the need to be uh, coding extensively. So whether you're a seasoned developer or dipping your toes into the tech world, there's something in the platform for everyone. So let's get started. Now, the first thing I want to say is that it's made up of five core products where we're talking about the Power Platform. There are Power Apps, which include things like Canvas apps, uh, model-driven apps. Power Automate, which is all of your workflow, work engine type um, side of the tool. Power BI, which is your visualizations and dashboard reporting and, and um, business um, data metrics. Power Virtual Agents, where you can create powerful chatbots for your websites or internally to ask and answer questions more efficiently. Um, and then Power Pages. Power Pages is a, um, a it used to be called Power Pages Portals. It's now Power Pages rebranded and is your public facing websites for users to be able to uh, access your information and data publicly rather than internally uh, tools as the other ones are for. Um, these all work seamlessly together with Dataverse, as the uh, as the the, the um, old um, used to be called CDS, uh, as the platform for all of your data to be stored on, and it helps you to really build across all of these tools seamlessly and package up really great solutions to use across the organisation. I'll look at each one in a little bit more detail in a moment, but the first thing I wanted to do is is talk to you about how you get these tools. So the platform, Power Platform, is part of the M365 suite, the Microsoft 365 suite of tools. So out of the box, you get a large chunk of these things as part of your standard monthly licensing. So having an enterprise license with Microsoft gives you access to things like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, um, Outlook, and so on. And as part of that, you'd be able to enable and access the Power Platform. However, there is a important note here as well around how uh, the licensing is structured. So a large chunk of it comes out of the box as available for free. However, there is also premium licenses in Power Platform. And a premium license enables you to do a lot more things. Uh, so there's an additional add-on per month. Now, typically there's, there's three price points. One is about five pounds a month for a single application. One is about seven or eight pounds a month for a page you go model and one is about 15 pounds a month which enables you to use a lot more and that's per user now i don't want to get too much into detail for licensing now it's a large topic microsoft even have their own certificate uh, that you can earn so i'll do a separate video to detail how the power platform licensing and the wider microsoft 365 licensing is structured for now what i want to do is i just want to um, just touch on the fact that there are premium licenses and standard licenses. And a very good example of that is Dataverse. Though Dataverse is pinned as the power horse behind Dataverse, to connect to Dataverse, you need a premium license. So there is an additional cost in, in connecting to that and using that part of the platform. Whereas if you use something like SharePoint, that's actually under the standard licensing model and wouldn't cost you any additional licensing subscription. So no, not too much detail there, but just to touch on licensing, what I want to do now is to move on to the actual tools within the platform. So the first part of the Power Platform that we want to talk about in the overview today is Power Apps. So Power Apps is the, um, the tool that you can use to create applications to 
meet your business's needs. So there are two main types of applications that you can build. There's a, a bit more to it that, but as part of the overall, you can build a Canvas app, which gives you a flexible canvas that you can create um, tailor-made um, application interfaces using uh, uh, an editing tool um, to drag and drop things onto a page and connect to data sources and build applications. So we've got some examples running here of the things that, that you can do. You can um, start as simply as building a Canvas app that is just connected to a SharePoint list and allows you to submit data. Or you can go really extensive and make a uh, responsive, high-grade, business process-driven solution that can go across the entire organization and, and guide people through a process or a system or a way of working. But you really do have to build that interface up yourself from scratch. So how you navigate, how you click through, how you interface with it. So it can be quite a lot to do with Canvas apps. The other part of it is model-driven apps, which are a really nice um, uh, tool that can be built using Dataverse. They are only built using Dataverse as the data source. You can't chop and change with a model-driven app. So do bear in mind that there is that premium license that we spoke about earlier on in this particular area. But a model-driven app like, basically gives you the framework of an application centered around the data in the middle. All the ribbons remain much the same. You can customize the navigation down the left, but it's within the parameters of the editing suite. And in the middle, you're really looking at data views, data forms, and things that are really sort of um, uh, connected to a, 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 the same way of working. It's very akin to, if you've seen it before, Dynamics 365. It gives you that same sort of look and feel overall. But what it does is it takes care of things like responsive design, lookout, layout and feel, buttons, navigation, takes care of all that for you, hence the model-driven world. So there's two really good examples of using Canvas apps, and I've got a number of other videos that talk about some of the things you can do in Canvas apps, more on model-driven apps coming soon. So then we move on to Power Automate. Now, Power Automate really is the work engine behind all of your creative Canvas apps and, and model-driven apps, and any other business process you can think of as well. So it's an automation tool. Um, some very simple things to think about with this one is if you want a task to be performed in the same way every time a certain action is performed, Power Automate can do that and, and make things a lot faster and a lot simpler. So let's say, for example, you got an email from your boss and you wanted to alert yourself on the mobile phone every time that happened. You could create a Power Automate workflow that triggers on an event of an email being arrived and saying, from my boss, and in your workflow could be to send mobile alert. Or it could be more complicated than that. It could be a, a full business process flow that says, in stage one, I have to capture all of this information. In stage two, I'm gonna hand it over to another department who's gonna make a decision on it. And they've got certain actions they need to perform at this stage. And then in stage three, it needs some approval from senior managers, for example. And you create a business process workflow that has stages and gates and required information. And you can be able to build a really good process off the back of it. So simply put with Power Automate, there's a, a few different variations, different triggers, different types and different ways of working. But the final piece of the puzzle for that is also RPA, um, desktop flows, where we can also integrate into legacy on-premise systems and get information out using things like trained button clicks, open up the system on the server, get this record, do something with it. So there's lots of uh, advanced things you can do with it as well. But for the day-to-day -day business use case, you're gonna be using it as a trigger action from your flow, uh, from your app, sorry, or you're gonna be doing it on event when something arrives in SharePoint. You can make actions happen. And a very common use case is the work for approval. So I have this new item that needs approving. Automate that so that the decision making is done, sent to somebody to approve, and then on approval, create an action at the back of it. Once we've got applications, we've got workflows running, the next thing to think about is, uh, is analytics. 
Power BI is the uh, interface for visualization of data across your organization. You can create um, basically workspaces with dashboard reports within them that take all that data you've been collecting in your processes and visualize it back to those that need to see it most. So we're talking um, charts and graphs, we're talking numbers and statistics, we're talking patterns, but also this grows further than that where you can also do um, you know, data insights and analytics that enable you to make better sense of your data to make better business decisions going forward. These Power BI reports can be built um, and embedded in apps, in websites, on portals, um, and you can create really great custom visualizations as well using um, some, some of the advanced open source SDK um, elements as well. But the out-of-box visualizations and the tools that you'll be using, you'd be able to create business reports that tell those that need to know more about the data that you're collecting in your, your business. Power Pages is next. Uh, I love Power Pages. It's a good revamp of portals. So it's a platform uh, and a software that's been around for quite a while within the Microsoft um, estate in various different flavors. And it's now in its sort of new Power Pages skin, if you like. Under the hood, it's very much uh, hooked onto some of the original um, building blocks that were there, but it's got a really good uh, user-friendly editing suite now. So basically, a Power Pages uh, is a website, a site, a public-facing site that people can access, and you can configure in a number of different ways. It will connect to all of the data that's in your Microsoft environment and enable you to surface it to those users. So you can put um, data tables from SharePoint on there. You can create uh, forms that people can fill in that then get submitted back into the back office. And of course, you're then hooking into the platform. So that could trigger a workflow, update a SharePoint list, notify a business user. So it really brings the, the, the customers back into your platform. Um, it's a low-code making tool um, that gives you a professional style website. However, there's also the ability to expand that if you need as well. So you can take your site that you built in Power Pages and expand it into Visual Studio Code and really customize to your heart's content using JavaScript or um, CSS or any of the styling that you might need to do on a typical website. Platform but it gives you that quickly, easily external facing solutions. And some of the examples that I've had in recent use cases are um, us as a business, reach out to customers and ask them to provide us with X. And typically to do that, we would need to wait for the web team to develop the form on the site to be able to do it. Whereas with a port, uh, Power Pages, not portals, that's what it used to be. With Power Pages, you could spin up that site or expand your existing site using the, uh, the tool as you need to, quickly, easily, effectively deploy that live and have people submitting your data in a much easier way. It's also very secure, there's a lot of layers of security on it. Again, not too much detail in this video here, but you can create sort of secure sites that are authenticated using um, security providers like um, Azure B2C. So they sign up and sign in, and they're authenticated to your platform. Lots of additional rules in that one that we can talk about as well. But you can also use other security providers as well. You can even use things like Facebook, um, email sign up, um, or third-party security providers that you can enable with that as well. Quick note, we've spoken about licensing a couple of times. Things like the Azure B2C come at a certain licensing point um, because it's an authenticated site. Unauthenticated sites are slightly cheaper. So there's two different licensing models for Power Pages as well. Um, they vary from, I think, about uh, 40, £50 a month to 140, £50 pounds a month something along those lines. Um, but again, not a licensing video, but just to call out, there are two different types of Power Pages sites at that point. Next in the platform is Power Virtual Agents. Now, Power Virtual Agents is uh, Microsoft's answer to chatbots. Um, and I have got to say, it's a very powerful chatbot editing tool. Now, there's a number of things that you we can get into with this one, but at really a, a fundamental level, there's uh, a few different types of use cases for chatbots that this can accommodate. One would be your public facing on a website. People need to ask information that is already available on the website but don't know where to find it. With Power Virtual Agents, you can create uh, in basically in minutes uh, a chatbot that analyzes your website, 
has a look through using some of the AI add-ins that are available uh, on the platform, gets all the information and auto writes the chat topics. And chatbot topics are really what drive the conversation. If you ask a key phrase to a chatbot, it sees if, it got that, if it's got that topic within it. If it has, it provides you the answer that's available. So AI can scan your site, find those topics and create you a chatbot using Power Virgil Agents in minutes. It's a very impressive tool. The other side of it is to the, the more curated Q&A type bot. So um, this might be more internally driven. I want to ask HR about my pay slips and there's some general answers that are available to people. Um, or I want to poll our internal intranet and answer some questions from there. Those sorts of things can be created and curated using a QA bot internally. Again, using an editing suite that you can log into. You can create topics, QA, questions that people can ask and certain answers and responses and rules around how the chatbot behaves under different um, uh, scenarios. So there's a number of different ways of doing that. And then, of course, we can build a framework, um, a bot framework of skills. So these various different bots that do different jobs can come under a skills framework and then you can ask a single bot to find the right bot with the answer to your question. So a very powerful, extensive framework of bots that you can then build. Uh, and that's all wrapped up into Power Virtual Agents within the editing suite that they've got there available for you. And then I touched on Dataverse earlier. Now Dataverse is part of the platform and um, is the basic platform that goes underneath it. As I've already said, there is a premium license required to connect to the Dataverse. But Dataverse is your big data model um, tool that enables you to build tables of uh, uh, interrelational data that can be um, looked up and called upon in your apps, in your flows, in your workflows, in your chatbots, and all the various different things that might need to call upon the data. It's um, a good way to think of this is kind of like a, an in-house version of SQL. It's for big data, but not at the grand scale that SQL might give you. But it's not at the low level that SharePoint might give you. So SharePoint is capable of holding a lot of data and SharePoint is a free connector within the platform, if you like, but Dataverse is the right one for those enterprise grade solutions. So when you're getting into building bigger applications, processes and systems, Dataverse is your go-to data source. There are, um, you can have a, a number of different tools and features that are available to you here that aren't available elsewhere. So for example, integrating to external systems using webhooks and service bus. You can do um, plugins for um, business logic. And you can, of course, extend Dataverse APIs with custom logic as well. So some real sort of additional tools that are available in Dataverse that you wouldn't really get on your SharePoints of the world, uh, especially not at any great level. So that's a flavour of the tools that are available to you within the Power Platform. Now, I have done other, another video on um, some of the initial considerations around being a citizen developer, what that means what um, governance considerations you might have and, uh, and other bits and pieces like that. So please head over to the channel and take a look at that if you want to know more about actually building on the platform and going forward. Um, there's also obviously some considerations that we've mentioned around licensing. Another video will be along soon to explain licensing in more detail. But really for today, what I wanted to do is give you a very good overview of what are the tools that are available to you. So if you found that useful, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, give it a like, comment below any questions you've got. I'll always answer those um, as best I can and also make any of those into future videos if they're a good topic of conversation. Um, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Um, that always helps us support and grow and do more. And thank you very much for watching. I've been Daniel Halls. This is Power Platform Principles.